This is part four, I think, of the $400 Chevy Colorado repairs. It's either part four or part three. I can't remember. Anyway, uh, I sold my Chevy S10, which was my daily driver and the best truck I have ever owned. I owned it for two years. Uh, I ended up selling it for $3,600. I bought it two years ago for $3,250, so uh, worked out well. But uh, I sold it because I'm thinking of replacing it with this. So that means we got to do some repairs on this to make this uh, truck daily drivable. Because in the meantime, I'll be driving big green over there. Uh, which I don't mind, of course, but it's just, I'd rather have something smaller to scoot around with. I'll show you a footage of my S10 leaving now. It, it was a little sentimental for me, a little emotional, but uh, I'll move on. Anyway, once uh, that's done, we're going to get into the repairs. It's a sad moment for me, guys. I'm selling my S10, best truck I've ever owned. Owned it for two years, put uh, 20,000 miles on it or something. Sold it for 3,600. The guy doesn't really know how to drive stick. <laughs> kind of funny. Yeah. Bought this thing uh, two years ago for 3,250. Did a little bit of rust repair to it. Drove about 20,000 miles. Did a couple more repairs and had a control arm that rusted through and the brake lines rusted through. Drove for two years, man. Mm, really good truck. Just sold it for 3600 which is slightly more than I got it for, so pretty happy with that sale. And uh be looking forward to driving my new Colorado, but it's bittersweet. All right, I'm taking the uh, $400 Colorado down to Advanced Auto Parts right now because they read engine light codes for free, and I'm pretty sure they have one of those fancy machines. As you can see, I do have the check engine light on. So we're going to head down there, pull the codes off this thing, and then I'll start fixing them. Um, hopefully, it is not a timing chain code because then I'm just going to sell the truck. I'm not going to do the timing chain. I predict that it will be an evap leak and a, a misfire code because it does miss a little bit when it's cold. So hopefully that's all it is, but let's check it out. Bad news guys, blinking check engine light and reduced power. Uh oh. I can't go any faster than 50. Um, I can't remember exactly what a blink blinking check engine light is, but I think it usually has to do with misfires or the exhaust systems. It's not good, I can tell you that. Uh, I'm gonna take it easy and maybe pull over in a minute, but uh, we'll have to see what happens. Oh, the check engine light's solid again. Let's see if I have power. Oh, I got power back again, guys. Uh-oh. Let's hope that wasn't a timing chain issue. All right, uh, arrived at Advanced Auto. They read the codes for me. I had five total codes, so that's quite a few. Here is the list of the, the five codes, so you can read them here. Um, I'm gonna fix all of these. I was thinking I might take it to the shop for the misfire codes. Uh, just, I don't know, just cause, cause the previous owner said he already replaced the coils and the plugs. Um, so if he already did that, then that's what I would have done for the misfire code. But uh, if he already did that, then I'm not 100% sure what it might be. So I might take it to the shop for that. But all the other codes are hopefully fixable. Okay, after doing a little bit of research, I have determined that this evap canister is the source of one of our uh, evap codes. So we'll start by uh, replacing that. Here we go. Okay, well, it's all hooked up. That took me literally two minutes, three minutes maybe. So I guess it's a lot easier to do with the bed off. Well, I was getting ready to put the bed back on and I got my bolts. Whoops. It's a little cold for leaving your bolts outside, I guess. I'm gonna go thaw this out. Well, it's a lot harder to put the bed on than to take the bed off, but uh, 
There it is all lined up. I can finally screw it down. It's getting dark today. I might do it tomorrow though. All right, I changed my mind. I'm just gonna screw the bed in today. In the snow, in the cold, in the dark. Here we go. All right, well, the bed is fully secured. I wanna call it a day for today. It's getting really cold and snowy. See you tomorrow. Well, we got a couple inches of snow last night. Let's uh, do a couple more things on the Colorado. All right, so what I'm doing now is the thermostat, which is another reason the engine light was on. The thermostat's located under there on the uh, radiator hose. So let's go ahead and get started. From what I've heard, it's pretty difficult to get this uh, thermostat out. Uh, I'm going to start by taking off the skid plate under here, and then we'll just keep undoing stuff till we get to the thermostat. Alright, now that I got the uh, skid plate off, I'm going to drain the radiator into this bucket here. Well, I can't say I didn't expect this to happen. While this finishes draining, we'll start uh, getting access to the uh, upper part of the radiator hose. Which you got to remove the wheel well uh, fender thingy. All right, now we have access in here. We got to remove this hose right back there. Right, to take out the thermostat, apparently it's a 10 mil. Let's see if we can get this. Got the old thermostat out, finally. Only a minor casualty on my fingernail. Let's uh, replace this thermostat. If you're doing this yourself, make sure you remove this old O-ring from the engine block before you put the new one in. Right, let me take out the old one and put in the new one here. Reinstallation time. Well, the new thermostat is in. All there is left to do is put the uh, hose back in, fill it up with coolant, and put the skid plates back on. All right, uh, before I got the hose back on, before I uh, put the skid plate back on and the wheel well um, plastic cover thing, I'm gonna head down to the store, get some coolant for it, um, pour it in and see if we leak anything. Got the coolant, we're gonna put it in now. All right, I've been running the truck for a few minutes now. It's not leaking back in there. You guys can take a peek. I'll zoom in for you. Oh, geez, too far. Hang on, let's try that again. There. That's the thermostat there. Not leaking. So I'll uh, throw on the fender flare and the 
not fender flare, the wheel well cover and the uh, skid plate will be done. All right, and everything's back in, no leaks. I think it's working well. Uh, unfortunately, I can't do any body work today because it's 14 degrees, and while I do do body work in cold, like sub-freezing weather, I don't like to do it sub-20 degrees just because the, uh, the Bondo gets really uh, brittle in that weather. So that's going to be the end of this video, guys. And uh, luckily, I should be able to daily drive this now since we fixed most of the issues. Anyway, uh, next video, we're just going to finish up the body work. Um, probably do the, probably bring it to the shop to fix the misfire code and then do the uh, catalytic converter O2 sensor. All right, I think it's working. You guys can see it's uh, reading much higher than it was. Um, I have a question for you Colorado guys though. Uh, is that reading too high? Because I'm not used to seeing uh, temperatures above halfway on the gauge. Uh, I'm thinking maybe the new thermostat was like rated maybe for a higher temperature than the old one. But uh, it's reading slightly above half, which I'm not sure is normal. You guys let me know. Let me, I might need to bleed the cooling system more, but uh, I think it's working. Anyway, let me know and thanks for watching, guys.